This video is to outline the differences and the similarities between the two control systems we have for the MDF Rosengen Lathe 2.0. We have one which is used for the spindle drive only and another which is used for quite a bit more. First let's look at the simpler of the two. The spindle motor stepper control gives you a great way to implement a stepper motor on the spindle drive. The bracket assembly we have is here and it's shown with the bracket as well as the idler assembly and the stepper motor is mounted to it. Stepper motors are a great way to, to deliver high torque at a very slow speed and the configuration provided will run as low as five minutes per revolution. The other thing you will find is that the consistent speed is going to make your cuts better. The parts needed are here. These are the headstock parts that get mounted to the headstock. And the bracket and the idler, mounting bolts, and then a, ste a stepper motor. And most of these parts are machined and really not easy to do. We can give you the directions, you can make your own, but you can just buy it from us too. There's a Pololu tick and a rotary encoder here. The rotary encoder is this piece. And there's a power supply. The design we use has the stepper motor attached to either of the controllers using a standard aviation style GX16-4 plug. You can put everything in the box like this, which is this black box, or you can take the parts and you can put them inside the bed of the lathe under here or under any parts of it uh, and then put the controls on the front side. You need to think of this really like you would think of the speed control on your traditional lathe. The control system does not provide for any other movement like a spherical or a linear slide. You can certainly build a second one of these but the two would not be coordinated and they would run independently. But this is much easier and quite a bit less expensive to build than the multiple stepper option. If you decide to build this, and then decide later to upgrade to the multiple stepper motor control, the only parts that won't be carried forward is the actual Polo tick inside there and the rotary encoder. By the way, never detach anything from these controllers uh, while they're powered on. On the other side is this multiple stepper motor control. And this also controls the spindle motor, but it gives you a boatload of additional functionality. As for the spindle, it provides for indexing also. It has a touchscreen, which you can see here. And it may sound simple that this provides for synchronizing the spindle plus one more of the steppers here on the Bravo, Z, or X axis. But this really sets you up for more fun than a barrel full of monkeys. There is so much there that we must also provide for you an online manual on how to use it, and that's right here. Um, and what's nice is that these are synchronized together, so if I go to the main screen here, I can go to the main screen here. And um, my internet's not the greatest, but you can see that the two mirror each other. And what you see on the screen on the manual is what you see here matches what you see on the touch screen. But this gives you all the information about how does that work. Okay. But I can tell you this system's a lot more complicated to build and it's more expensive too. Okay. So you can get all the information about this system. It's actually out here on the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library. And it's organized like an actual library of books. The first shelf has manuals on how to use and how to maintain the machine. Also, the YouTube videos are there on that old school TV, which is kind of cool in my mind. On shelf two are all the information you need to build one of your own. And including all the design standards that went into it or how to buy the parts if you want. Shelves 3 and shelf 4 are historical manuals about uh, ornamental turning and you know could be useful for you at any point. So let's look inside these two machines. This is the spindle stepper motor control and it's based on the TIC 36 V4 from Pololu. I hope I said that correctly. And we use the one that has everything already soldered on rather than trying to solder all that stuff on ourselves. It can be configured a whole host of ways and I've cho chosen to use a rotary encoder with a push button for this design. And that's right here. Okay. You turn it clockwise to make the lathe go forwards. You can turn it counterclockwise or as the Brits would say anti-clockwise to slow it the forward movement or increase the reverse movement depending on which way you're turning. And then if you want to stop it at any point, you can just push on it and it has a detent there that shorts to ground and makes it uh, do a slow stop and it's programmed to do that. At 
If you want to make one of these yourself, I recommend you look at the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library, which is here. And on the second shelf, you'll see there's the blue manual here. And that blue manual gives you all the directions you need to make this. Um, if you want to buy one from us, we can supply it, you know, finished in a case like this. There's another option where you can put this power supply inside your box and put, you know, the controls in an external one. Or you could use something like this, which is, uh, you know, just a cover and put all of the switches for the speed as well as the power, you know, in here and put everything inside your box. It's, as you can see, it's not a lot of space needed. So, you know, that's one of the things you could do. Uh, we sell a kit, which is just all the parts you need. And that way you don't have to buy anything yourself and it'll come ready to go. All you have to do is follow the directions and make it happen. This is the multiple stepper motor control. I've taken the sides off and I wanted to get you to have the ability to see what's inside before I put all the sides on. It uses the same power supply from Meanwell as the Polo Lutic, but it uses separate stepper drivers. There's the one here for the spindle, the Z-axis, the X-ray axis, and the Bravo axis. The system needs a more powerful processor and it is based on the Teensy 3.5, which is the green board right here. The Teensy is plugged into the purple board, known as the printed circuit board, uh, it also sometimes called a PCB and that's this board here It's purple just because I get them from OSH Park and that's their signature color And by the way, if you want to get the DIY kit from us, it's good because uh, OSH Park provides these three at a time. They don't sell them individuals and since I buy more than one at a time I'll be glad to sell them to you, you know as singles The board can be used with the external stepper motor drivers as shown here or you could mount them onto the board using a different driver from Pololu. But the external ones are better at heat control and they can handle more power. In the end, they're also more resilient and they provide better options for the people who aren't electrical engineers. So that's the approach we support, but you could go with onboard drivers if that's something you want. I opt to solder the wires onto the printed circuit board here. I believe this is going to help ensure they don't become detached as the book's box gets moved around. If you choose to use connectors, I recommend you select ones that are keyed so they are not plugged into the system backwards when you plug something in. <clears throat> this is the library we have online. It's the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library. It's just at mdfre2.colvintools.com. I mean, it's we didn't try to get it to be too much rocket science. But if you go to the shelf number two here, you can see these two books. The first one on the left is the book on how to make this and the one on the right is the book on how to do the upgrades. Doing the upgrades is important because Ed does periodically release updates to the software for both the Nexteon display here as well as for the Pololu, I mean sorry, for the Teensy. And you'll just need to use uh, the instructions we publish as well as these little micro SD cards that get used with um, the Teensy board. One quick note I do show here, you need to make sure that you have a good micro SD uh, cable. Some of them that are cheap and are only used for uh, powering a device or charging a device may not allow the signal to go through. So the instructions mention that, but you'll just need to make sure you have a good cable there. They're not expensive to buy. We have three options we provide at Colvin Tools. We provide a fully assembled and tested box like you're going to see here. This is going to get assembled into the uh, 3D case here. Uh, before I ship it out. Uh, or you can get the fully assembled piece without the headstock parts. Um, that's an upgrade kit that we offer for people who've invested in the Polo Lutic and uh, just wanted to go to something far more exciting. Or if you want to do it yourself, we have a kit where we supply the printed circuit board and a few of the pieces that are just really hard to find on your own um, and making it easier for the DIY person. Now let's see these two in action. First, we're going to look at the spindle stepper control. As you can see, everything's plugged in, and we'll turn it on. As I rotate this rotary encoder, each click is a speed increase or a speed decrease. As you can see, that slowest speed is very, very slow, and it's just over five minutes per revolution. But I can rotate it more, just like you can on a traditional lathe. 
and it'll hit a maximum speed. And then you can keep turning it, but it's not going to go any faster. All right. If I want to stop it, I can just push the button and it does a slow stop. I can turn it the opposite direction and have the system rotate the spindle in the opposite direction, i.e. go backwards. And again, I can stop it by pushing. The other thing you can do is you can be going forward and you can adjust the speed down and when it gets to zero it will stop and then you can keep going. So you don't always have to click it down if you don't want to. The great thing I like about being able to click it down is that it just brings it to a stop and you don't have to figure out where that zero point is. Okay. And if you want to do any indexing you can you know disable the stepper motor and just use one of these. This happens to be from Alisam, but you need to use a standard indexing wheel in this approach, just like you would with a traditional lathe. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this, and I'll connect up the other one. So give me a second, and I'll be right back. I've now connected the touchscreen up to the multiple stepper motor controls, as well as a few other pieces that I'm going to point out here. First is this linear slide, and this is a prototype that I'm just using, but it, it will show you the movement that we're talking about. I also have uh, set this to be the z-axis at this point, even though it doesn't look like it, but imagine that it's moving along the z-axis. And also is a limit switch, which is here, and it um, has a sensor, which can be used to determine when the limit has been reached and we want to stop the movement. This is really nice if you're like me and you want to get things started running pretty slowly and then go get a cup of coffee or answer your wife's questions or whatever that may be. So normally this control box would be sitting up underneath the bed here if you're on the lathe 2.0 but if you uh, have like the original MDF Rose Engine lathe it still works you just can't set it up under there because there's not an adequate space and so that's where you would just set it to the side. It really doesn't matter where you set it as long as you can connect the cables to it. So again, the cables we have here, the spindle, this is the exact same cable that we had before. We have the z-axis connected to this linear slide, touch screens connected here, and then that's the limit switch. Those are the pin numbers for the teensy. Okay, so let's turn it on and let's see what it looks like in action. This is a really complicated program and it's pretty big indeed. So you have to make sure you wait until it comes up with a little blue box down here that says load any. There we go. And then you can start using it. There's a lot of functionality that we provide with this system. So we went ahead and provided an online manual to help it be easy for you to use. And I'm going to go ahead and show that as we go so that you can see how the two compare. It's online for a lot of reasons. Firstly, it's not finished and frankly it never will be. So uh, as we get new functions developed or as we get a better understanding of how to help people know how to use them because sometimes uh, what makes sense to one may not make sense to another. So we try to make it as useful as possible and uh, we want to add those directions you know here online and have them updated as we go. We also are given directions on some key activities and what we have so far are how to do fluting, purling, and threading. And as we develop more and more of those, they'll be added to this table. So, you know, keeping this online means you don't have to go buy a bunch of manuals. And as Ed releases new versions of the software, you'll see here this is for version 19 and a higher. And it tells you as you go what parts of this are for version 19 and wouldn't be accessible, like in this case with version 17. The first function that I'm going to point out is the main function, and that one's here. This is what it looks like on the computer, on the web. And it allows me to drive the spindle just like any other, so you can see that happening here. And it also allows me to drive, in this case, the z-axis with using a limit switch. And limit switches are something very useful because it allows me to go get a cup of coffee and then come back, while something that typically runs very slowly can continue doing what it needs to do. So here it is in action. So in this case I'm going to be doing threading, so I'm going to be moving away from the headstock. And you will see here very soon it's going to hit the limit switch. 
And in this case, I've set the setting to stop both the linear movement as well as the spindle at the same time once the limit switch is hit. So all I have to do then is stop it and then I can disengage everything and reset it. I just have to uh, make sure the limit switch is not engaged. Okay, so now let's look at indexing. I'll move this out of the way. And with indexing, I would typically do this in divisions. You could do it in degrees. But with indexing, if you're doing this in divisions and you say I wanted to do this like it's set here, every seven divisions, that's something that would be hard to do with a plate like this one. It's, uh, this one is set, I think it's five degrees is the minimum. So doing something that's 51.43 degrees is, is fairly hard. This is actually fairly easy. So I have it set now and let's just index it. There it is. And in, what's nice here is it also tells me how many times it's indexed. And that way I can tell if it's gone around a full circle or in this case it's showing that I've done this five times. I did it one time off camera, so that's fairly nice. And then I have the sync function, and I'll show you that one just really quickly, which allows me to not use limit switches, but in this case, I'm going to use in a combination of indexing and synchronized movement. Things that this would be used for is in threading. So I would want to say, let's move this so many threads or how many threads per inch I want to cut. And this is really nice because I can actually pick how many threads per inch I want and it just moves this cutter along the z-axis to give me the requested threads. And I don't have to go to a new tooling every time for uh, changing from, say, 16 threads per inch to 14 or 12. The math on how to do that is all in here. And if I want to go to threading, I got a whole piece up here on threading that talks to you about how do you do the calculations for setting it all up. So you don't have to remember all that, which is rather nice. So I hope I've given you a good overview of the two options we've developed and why you want to pursue one versus the other. Hopefully you do pursue this on an MDF Rose Engine lathe. You don't have to buy it from us. Uh, look at the manuals online, build your own, but do enjoy and have a good time in the shop. Thank you. Bye-bye.